Hey everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be looking at Honing the Craft, January's update for the Alpha and New World MMO. Uh, this is going to be one of the bigger updates of, well, this year so far as it's the first one, but really this is going to be one of the coolest and best updates I've seen yet as it's all looking like positive progress to releasing the game. I mean, just great updates all together and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But we're going to start off with the biggest update. And that's going to be the new weapon, the rapier. Uh, however you want to pronounce it, the rapier is an amazing weapon. Uh, this is probably a weapon I'll have a lot of fun with and have a lot of PvP and PvE exchanges. So you'll be able to watch a lot of that here in the future um, as we do show you a clip here of the rapier. But uh, the rapier was an introduced melee weapon that excels at quick piercing attacks. The rapier's attacks scale off of a character's dexterity score, and adventurers will be able to progress to mastery trees. The blood weapon mastery tree focuses on applying stacks of the bleed status effect to enemies, and then popping those stacks for big damage with flourish and finish. This is an awesome, awesome mastery tree. So this is going to be a lot of a burst kind of concept. So you're going to add a bunch of stacks, and then you're going to try to do a finishing blow with a burst. And you're going to, I'm assume, want to, you know, stay in the fight as long as possible, and then they won't, you know, realize how many stacks you have on, and you'll just be able to, you know, do that final burst to get that kill. So it's going to be a great weapon, it seems like, for PvP, specifically the blood weapon mastery tree. But then you hear about the Grace Weapon Mastery Tree and you think maybe this one as well. So the Grace Weapon Mastery Tree focuses on evasion, counterattacking, which is an awesome idea. Uh, counterattacking, we do see, uh, you know, the rapier. He kind of holds it at a stance, and if they if he gets attacked at that point in time, he does a uh, damage in return. So it's a great idea to put counterattacking in this game, as there's a lot of you know stun locking that was. A problem and this should be able to counter that in a sense so they also have the talented blade work with the rapier in the grace weapon mastery We're not 100 percent sure what that is but uh the rapier will have two crafted weapon perks specific to it in addition to the perks that are all that are broadly applicable to the other weapons then they have the legendary rapier quest you can go on an epic quest for the legendary rapier frozen lament Level 60 adventurers can speak to Ranger Harath in Mountain Rise Outpost, Shattered Mountain, to begin this quest. Recover the components needed to create the Frozen Lament, and then deliver them to Ranger Madaki in Mountain Home. We've talked about Madaki before. Uh, he's a part of a lot of, lot of legendary quests, I believe. Um, just remember that name. It's going to be an important one, I'm sure, coming up when we have New World released. So next, we're going to talk about the big crafting system changes. So, they've made some major changes to increase the number of items players can craft and added additional functionality to the crafting system. The main goal for these changes is to keep crafting and gathering relevant through endgame, while adding more depth, a new interface, and more interesting choices in the crafting system. They added named items that can be crafted for most trade skills. These items start at tier 2 and go up to tier 5 with the goal of making crafting even more relevant in the endgame introduced a variety of rare resources and ingredients that will be required to craft named items. Some of these rare ingredients can also be used in procedural crafting to gain gear score bonuses. They introduced categorical ingredients that allow players to use different types of ingredients rather than a specific one. This will make it easier to craft various items currently used for repair kits, certain cooking recipes, and procedural crafting overhauled the procedural crafting system to give players more control and flexibility over custom crafting. Players can now invest different levels of Azoth while crafting. The more Azoth you invest, the more bonuses you have a chance to add to your resulting craft. Players can now use a higher or lower tier materials within the same type. For example, different tiers of wood when crafting a sword to increase or decrease the gear score outcome. Procedural crafting can also result in named items if the result is statically identical to a named item in the game. They added new ways to unlock recipes. Artacraft recipes will allow players to craft a single item of that recipe. Recipe schematics will allow players to permanently unlock a recipe. All trade skills now have a cap at 200 to unify gathering, refining, and crafting progression. 
New Gear Mechanics Part 1. So they've introduced over 100 new named weapons and 50 new named armor pieces. These items all have unique names, stats, and backstories. We will continue to build out these gear rewards and assign them to game activities and named characters. They updated the repair mechanics. Now when an item reaches zero durability, it will have significantly reduced performance, half gear score, and no perks, but it will still be usable and no longer automatically unequips. Introduced a new repair kit system with four tiers. Repair kits will repair any item of a corresponding tier. Added a repair kit recipe to many crafting trade skills. This is a great way for crafters to package and sell extra repair kits. Food mechanic changes. There are now two types of food, buff food and recovery food. Recovery food will provide quick HP recovery that is intended for out of combat HP recovery, plus a long term slow HP recovery buff. Buff food will provide a gameplay buff in the long term slow health recovery but not the immediate recovery. Added food items that will buff a variety of attributes and combinations. Buffs from food now persist through death so you no longer have to reapply your food buffs each time you die. Other buffs are still purged on death. Removed warding foods. This functionality will be replaced with potions in a future update. Crafting and refining bonus foods unlock starting at tier 3. Gathering foods at tier 1. Now we're going to take a look at the combat. So they did change the elite enemy system and they've done a great job with combat overall and we'll see that here in the changes below. But let's start out like I said with the elite enemy system. So they're continuing to build on the system to make elite and champion enemies more challenging and change up their gameplay. All named enemies above level 15 now utilize the elite enemy system. Each elite enemy will have 1-3 to three affixes applied, which change their attacks, characteristics, and depending on their difficulty and level, that will be applied. They also increase the difficulty of AI when players fight enemies well above their level. Enemies get more armor and damage the higher their level is versus the player. Armor buffs begin at 3 levels over the player and damage buffs begin at 5 levels. Enemies 6 levels higher or more than the player will outright kill the player instead of placing players in death store. Enemies 6 levels or higher or more than the player have an increased perception range of plus 10 meters. Enemies 10 levels or higher than the player do not get staggered by the player. So now to one of my favorite changes of the entire list and that is that they reduce the number of weapons a player can equip from 3 to 2. They do note that your second weapon slot still unlocks at level 5 just as before. So that is an amazing, amazing update to me. Uh, the fact that you can't just run around with three weapons, you can't master three weapons and run around with them at all times. I mean, it, it's going to help a lot with the cooldowns being as low as they're going to be. Um, this is going to allow this to not be a spam fest with just spamming every, you know, every skill you can and just stun locking or... Uh, counterattacking or whatever it's going to be at that time, whatever the meta is going to be, this is going to help a lot with that and make sure the combat is actually fun and uh, you know skill driven. So that's great change, great combat system update right there. Uh, the players can now only equip two instead of three weapons. Uh, players can now move during ranged attack animations. Uh, very very good change as well. Adjusted ranged attack cancels to ensure they offer as much flexibility as the melee attack updates in the December update. Another great change. Updated grip breaking to make it more apparent to players. Having grip broken now triggers a visual reaction. Added a new grip break sound effect to better highlight when a player's grit is broken. Updated combat networking in a continuing effort to improve how combat functions. Adjusted hit detection logic to add a brief delay before attack hits to confirm better detect hits versus blocks and dodges. So basically hit registration right there, um, a great update as well. You want to make sure obviously hit registration is the best it can be to uh, really any kind of competitive game or non-competitive game. This is just a big deal for every game in general. So great change there as well. Let's get down to the balance changes. So the Warhammer removed grit, they removed grit from heavy attack startup. The uh, balance change on the bow. Reign of Arrows significantly reduced the amount of time the attacker is locked into the attack animation. Life Staff reduced the startup frames on light attacks. Fire Staff reduced the startup frames on light attacks. So they got a little bit of a 
buff on the bow, life staff, and fire staff, which is definitely needed, um, as those were pretty weak in the uh, the last chance we got to play. So let's take a look at the UX and UI questing and progression. Um, the settlement updates have been pretty outstanding, as you can see in the uh, video here. The visual variety has been added to specific settlements. Now all settlements have a unique layout. Crafting stations now visually upgrade with each new tier, making it easier for players to visually distinguish the level of each settlement's various stations. Quest improvements. The starting experience through uh, to the acquisition of Corruption's Bane has had many tweaks and alterations for progression flow. All existing quests have had their dialogue updated to improve NPC characterization and enhance quest directives. Many zones have restructured their quest for narrative flow and replaced generic looting with new ra new interactable objects. And then we're going to look at group play, which is a really, really great update as well. We've updated how group XP functions to make it easier to play in a group. As long as a group as a whole does 15% damage to a creature, everyone in the group gets XP and a chance at loot. Group members will have to satisfy requirements to get credit. Performing actions such as damage, heal, block in the last two minutes, and being within a certain distance of the killed creature gives you XP. Adjusted the amount of XP that is granted when an enemy is killed by a group. Previously, everyone got full XP. Now the amount will be adjusted based on the number of groups and number of players within those groups. This change was made with the idea that monsters are easier to defeat while playing with a group. So that allows solo players to not fall too far behind, um, and it also takes away some of those um, scammy kind of ways of getting XP really, really quickly as you just jump in a group of, you know, a large number and just tag, you know, enemies when, you know, you have a group of, I'd say, 50 people and you just tag enemies and you kill them real quick. That was a great way to level up, and uh, they took that away here in this update, which is great. Uh, so now we have the faction and territory. They adjusted the certain values in preparation for a upcoming larger feature that will reward both company members and everyone in the faction that owns a territory with some cool new benefits. They reduced tax savings for company members in a territory uh, they own to 30%. Reduced housing price savings for company members in a territory they own to 20%. And they reduced gathering bonus for company members in a territory they own to 10%. Um, so really all around great updates by Amazon. Uh, this, this is really looking good. Every update has looked better and better. I'm truly excited to get started on that beta and I hope you guys stay tuned for that rep here gameplay as I am excited to equip that weapon and show you guys, you know, show it off a little bit. Uh, tell me what you guys are most excited about in this update and, uh, leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.